What's your take on what's happening in, in, in C5 versus DeFi and where this is all headed? Well, thanks for having me. First, let me establish a little bit of a distinction between CFI and DeFi. So um, while we at Uniswap certainly believe in crypto broadly, whether that's as an asset class or the underlying technology, Uniswap and DeFi really is about the technology. It's really about decentralized rails for financial activity. Um, in contrast, a centralized exchange, as you know, operates the same way, frankly, that a traditional exchange does, but with digital assets. So that's a critical difference. It means that they're taking buy and sell orders, they're managing risk, they may be managing a balance sheet. Um, whereas in contrast, Uniswap, a decentralized protocol, is self-executing code. It's kind of like, you think about it as like SMTP is the core protocol at the core of email, and then you have applications like Gmail and others on top of them that help you um, actually uh, use those protocols. So in the, what we've seen in the past few months is frankly uh, risk management challenges at some of the centralized players that have struggled. Um, and, and also some, some internal risk control challenges. Um, again, in contrast, these decentralized protocols don't ever touch customer money. They don't have customer accounts. And so that means that um, the way you manage risk is by having really effective software that's audited, that's battle tested. And so in the past few months, there's been plenty of volatility and DeFi protocols have, have proven themselves uh, generally resilient mm -hmm. and have not been hacked, have been, have been secure and have performed. Well, let's talk about this a little more in terms of the customer itself. There's a lot of talk about how customers get paid back more fairly when it comes to DeFi rather than CeFi. Is that true? And to the extent that it is true or not true, what is allowing that to happen at, um, um, with more certainty? Totally. So it is a completely different business model. So when you're trading with a centralized exchange, their entire business model is to make the spread in the same way it is for a traditional market maker or exchange, uh, to make the spread on a transaction as well as a transaction fee. Whereas in a decentralized exchange, there is a two-sided marketplace. So anyone can become a liquidity provider or a market maker. And that liquidity provider then gets their pro rata share of the fees from the trades executed on the platform. So Uniswap actually has no revenue associated with the decentralized Uniswap protocol. Instead, all of those fees, are, they're essentially flat fees that are redistributed at pre-described, the flat fees at uh, pre-described rates that are then redistributed to the liquidity providers. What that means is that you could trade on a centralized exchange for three to 5%, and you could trade on Uniswap for one basis point to 100 basis points. So it ends up being a really material, material difference. I, I should add that the fees that you do have in DeFi are the network fees. So like gas fees on Ethereum that you and your um, audience are likely familiar with. Right now, those are very low because there's less network activity. But overall, the business model for DeFi is fundamentally different. It's using open source code to provide the activities that have traditionally been performed by central intermediaries. And so when we think about the promise of blockchains that uh, we've been sort of awaiting to see in, uh, in traditional markets for some time, I think what we've seen in the past few months is how that can become very, very different, how the benefit to the user is very different, and how in the case of market volatility, uh, they still can really perform and, and prove resilient. What are the lessons you've taken from this very tumultuous time about how to make DeFi more resilient? I think most important is to anticipate how to protect your users and how to ensure security. That if we want to grow at this point, all of DeFi is still only about 4 million users. In order for this technology to get broader mass adoption, we have to explain its benefits better. Uh, so the cost benefits that I just described. But then we also um, have to ensure that we're making it simpler and easier to use. Part of why people use centralized exchanges is that they have on-ramps. You can exchange your dollars for crypto. Uh, they buy sports and stadium sponsorships. And so you heard of them. And this is an opportunity, I think, to grab drive greater awareness of DeFi so that people understand some of those benefits. And the second thing I, I mentioned is that it's an opportunity to introduce uh, risk management measures and screening that can help people understand the risk that they're taking, even if we don't yet have regulatory clarity in a great level of detail.